genetic similarity theory. People do not mate randomly. People are not even friends randomly. You can pass on your genes in a number of ways. You can pass them on directly by having children. You can pass them on indirectly by, let's say, you know, you're the spinster aunt and you spoil your nieces bloody rotten. And, and, and so then you, they are 25% the same as you. And so you're indirectly helping to perpetuate your genes. You can also pass them on simply by helping people that are similar genetically to you. And what we find is that people, best friends, are, are more genetically similar than two random members of the same ethnic group. Um, and, it, and they look more similar. Morphologies of face analysis has been done. They look similar to the extent that when this research was carried out and they were coming into the hallway, you know, you could, the, the guy that was researching was just sitting there going, yeah, those two are best friends. They're probably living in, you know. Um, now, the, the, the same is the case with even more so with married couples. Uh, because obviously, if you marry someone that is uh, genetically too similar to you, then you, you know, let's say you know, your brother, then you have, you, or even your cousin, then you have the possibility of, 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 of harmful double doses of mutant alleles, and you have the possibility, therefore, of children that have inbreeding depression. If you marry someone that's too different from you, um, then you're not passing on as many of your genes as you could do. You want to pass on more, how do you pass on more of your genes? You marry someone that's you know, genetically quite similar to you. So then you're passing on more of your genes. So we are attracted to people that are genetically relatively similar to us. Research from Iceland found that the optimum for a happy, lasting marriage with lots of children is your third cousin. And <clears throat> inbreeding depression falls off a cliff after second cousin. And the optimum is therefore your third cousin. Now, I think two random English people are 12th cousins. Interestingly, me and Richard are 12th cousins. We discovered this recently. We're both descended from the Duttons of Tatton Hall in Cheshire. Um, so two random English people, 12th cousins. So wife and husband, on average, third cousin in Eastern Iceland or equivalent thereof. You know, a genetic equivalent by chance of let's say 3% or 2% above the baseline of the population. So then you're passing on more of your genes. So we tend to sexually select for people like us. Now the brain is 84% of the genome, 84%. 84% of our genes are related to, the, to our brains. So obviously couples tend to be very alike in terms of psychological traits. They tend to have similar levels of intelligence. They tend to have similar kinds of personality, although of course there's variation. If you want a functioning couple, then you've got to be a bit different in order to be a functioning economic unit. If you marry a woman that's exactly like you, then it may be very, very intimate and so forth, but you probably won't work as an economic unit because you know, no one will get the bills paid or whatever. No, no. Women that are uh, a bit different from you, that's wife material. Women that are you in a, in a female body, that's mistress material. Now, <laughs> am I right, lads? Yes. Um, Hi, um, you said, and we know that breeding with uh, someone who's very genetically um, similar to you carries the risk of producing health um, physical health disorders. Very, very similar. Yeah, it, very similar, yeah. If you're breeding with, if someone breeds with someone who's very genetically different to you, does that carry any such health risk? Um, am I allowed to say this? You can tell the truth. Well, I did, you told me I couldn't tell the truth. You told me I couldn't. No, you should coerce the truth. Feelings are more important than data. No, they're not. <laughs> um, the answer is... Oh, God. Okay, fine. On your head, be it. Um, the, answer, the, the answer is yes. Um, there is a phenomenon of outbreeding depression, of um, outbreeding vigour. So people that are genetically dis dissimilar have children, and there are no double doses. There's no double doses. So in that sense, they're going to be healthy very healthy. And one of the things that there's studies on this that you find with people that are mixed race is they are above averagely good looking. And they are good looking because they do not have double doses. So they tend to be beautiful. However, certain mental health conditions are elevated among such people because because the brain is extremely complicated and it is reliant on lots and lots of traits, um, genes working together to produce a trait. And if you um, breed with somebody that is very different from you, then those um, gene complexes will be broken up. 
And that means that the trait in question will potentially function in an unpredictable fashion. Um, and this is why if you compare um, there's study, many studies on this, um, studies of, uh, Af let's say, African-Americans, white Americans, and people that are half white American and half African-American, then they seem to be um, elevated in these traits. They also have higher infertility. So there's, it's a trade-off. Um, now, what you said about inbreeding depression, that's interesting, because why do people, for example, in Pakistan or Bangladesh or whatever, why do they marry their cousins? Why do you think? To not break up the gene complexes. So if, you, if, you're, in a, if you're in an environment where the, the, uh, there's huge pathogen load, there's all these things, that, you know, all these insects, malaria, all this stuff, um, you're surviving, you're fine. So you've got to make sure that those gene complexes that mean that you're adapted to those pathogens do not break up. How do you do it? You marry your cousin. Heart, the, the children that have double doses, well, they just die. So that's that. And the children that carry on, they're going to be all super, 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 super healthy and adapted to that ecology. So that's one of the reasons why you marry your cousin. So there's also inbreeding vigor. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting balance. For avoiding the landmines in that question, can we just... Thank you very much. <laughs>